fun antics aside, this is the one wheel pint. And I know that this is a little bit different than what I normally do on my channel here. I had to make a video on this regardless because I've wanted a one wheel for the last four years or something. So I've spent many, many months saving up and here it is, ugh, the one wheel pint. So to actually get started on the pint, you gotta charge this thing up via this charging port right here. And yes, this is an electric skateboard, I guess if you wanna call it. It's got a 148 watt hour battery and it's got a 750 watt motor inside of the hub right here. That's how it actually drives itself. So basically it's like the iPhone SE of the one wheel lineup. It's in a smaller, more refined package, but it still packs the same beastly internals as the one with plus itself. Okay, so I accidentally turned this thing on, and as you can see, it's got this status LED right up here. This is gonna show you when you actually put pressure on the foot pad. It's gonna show you what side that you actually apply pressure to. It's got front and back LEDs. They switch between headlights and taillights depending on which way you're actually driving. And this bar right up here at the front actually acts like a battery indicator. That way you don't gotta look at your phone and check the One Wheel app to actually see your battery percentage. Now, I should probably be responsible and let this thing charge up all the way first, but I'm impatient and I wanna get on it. Ugh, oh, it's humid out here. Okay, so I'm about to go on my maiden voyage of the one wheel pint back there. And the first thing I need to emphasize is safety. I bought this big old freaking helmet right here. I'm about to die, oh my God. Oh no. Oh, there I go. Oh God, there's leaves. No! Oh god. Oh, there it goes. Oh, let's try this again. Ooh, hello. Nope. Okay. I'm scratching the crap out of this thing. Nope. Down I go. Oh, hello. I'm not giving up on this thing. Oh, hello. Oh boy. Oh, there it goes. Oh shoot, okay. This thing is a lot harder than it looks, oh my god. Oh, down I go. Okay, there we go. Kinda. Ooh. Lean back and then lean forward. There we go. Oh god. Okay. And down, whoa, shoot. Oh, and now I'm in the grass. Oh. Went a little too fast there for my liking. And that's an example of a wheel slip. Oh, there it goes again. Now it's upside down. I'm sorry, baby. Yep, this is gonna take some getting used to. I'm gonna hit this curb. And I tried. I gotta practice more with this. But so far, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Adios. I tried. But I didn't just stop there and call it a day. I spent the next half hour doing constant laps around my backyard just so I could get the absolute basics down. And if I'm being honest, I was surprised it didn't take me longer. I've read a lot of people's personal experiences learning to ride the one wheel and those who say they've had previous boarding experience like skateboarding, snowboarding, surfing, and so on were able to get the hang of it super quick. I, on the other hand, haven't gone snowboarding in like eight years, so I was basically starting from scratch. The key is to just keep at it until you get the hang of it. You're not going to be a master the first time you hop on and this time lapse is literal proof of that. I've let probably a dozen of my friends try to ride it so far and only two of them got the hang of it after a few tries, but those friends also have skateboarding experience. Plus, it's just fun to watch people wipe out on this thing. Faster. Faster. No, he's going to die. <laughs> there he goes. He's he's the car. Die. Preston. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm floating on day two of my one wheel ride. I'm starting to take to the concrete a lot more than just the grass. Like I was riding in my backyard a lot. I can already say that I'm much more confident riding than I was originally. There's a couple things that I've really started to learn on my one wheel journey and that's more how to ride. Uh, my feet are a lot less wobbly 
when trying to balance, just trying to keep a center of gravity on the board. And another thing that I'm noticing is I started out riding with my torso a lot more forward than turned. That in turn was causing me to use my uh, use my knee to try and turn with the board, uh, t leaning left and right. And I was putting a lot of strain on my knee and it wasn't failing too hot. On one hand, I feel a lot more stable, but on the other hand, I'm also starting to feel the effects of foot fatigue. Oh God, I'm gonna hit some potholes here. Oh God, don't fall, please. I cleared the friggin' trench back there. So when you're actually on your feet and using your feet to steer, you are going to encounter something called foot fatigue. And basically it just feels like my feet are really, really sore. And I'm maybe like a mile or two into my journey. While well, the foot fatigue doesn't feel good or anything, it's helping me maintain a lot better of balance and kind of keeping me uh, keeping me in the right mindset with how to actually ride this thing. Because I started out on some kind of bumpy grass, because let's be real, grass and dirt isn't exactly flat, I was kind of getting the hang of dealing with uh, rough conditions and these streets of course aren't perfect so I am doing all these little micro corrections just kind of like without even thinking about it so I am feeling a lot more confident just kind of riding and stuff and my development is a whole lot of uphill and downhill so like I'm actually riding uphill right now I haven't gotten to the point of feeling any pushback and I think that's because I'm in the redwood profile and I'm also still learning I definitely don't want to nosedive while on concrete especially because I don't have that much protective gear. I got this big old helmet. I don't have any like wrist guards or anything like that. Uh, that so that's definitely gonna be my next purchase. I know that this is super hard to see me because it's getting dark, but you know what's super cool about riding at night? The board has headlights. Like look at this. It's like a little rainbow. Okay, it is day three with the one wheel pint and I'm really starting to get the hang of this thing. I've actually since switched to the Pacific riding mode from the Redwood riding mode. And what riding modes are is they basically control how fast the board goes and how maneuverable it is. The turning's a lot more responsive. So when I have all those like micro jitters with my feet and like uh, correcting the rotation of the board and all that, because the board is much more responsive to that, I'm getting a much like smoother ride overall. I'm also starting to feel pushback a lot more because I'm trying to push the limits of the board. Um, but I'm actually seeing some really, really good range on this thing. I've gone maybe five or six miles so far today and i just got the notification not that long ago that i'm at 50 percent battery so i've got about four miles left so i wanted to test out the off-road capabilities of oh shoot there's a branch oh god but i wanted to test out the off-road capabilities of the pint because i know a lot of people take these things on trails and stuff oh god and i don't think it's gonna be that good of an idea mostly because of how rocky this trail is it's like ridiculously bad uh, and the stock vega tire isn't exactly the most suited for off-roading but i mean for real basic stuff uh it's actually not bad all right here is oh Christ. oh yeah that, uh, this is i wouldn't take it on this type of path actually this right here isn't all that bad it's a lot less rocky, really. It's more fine stuff, really. But right now, the pint's actually doing pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Of course, it hits the occasional bump. And it also doesn't help that this trail that I'm riding on has had like ATVs and stuff go through it. So there's like tire tracks. So I'm constantly sitting in a divot with the pint. There we go. Oh, this part's gonna be really bad. Oh, good lord. Oh my god. There. That wasn't too painful. Look at this man. So plain and simple, the one wheel pint is really freaking cool. It's honestly one of my absolute favorite things to do, I guess, over the last several years. I really freaking love this thing and there's really not anything else like it. So basically that's gonna do it for now. Uh, I'm just gonna play some cool B-roll and stuff with me, zooming around on this thing. Um, so if you like what you saw, you know what to do, and if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get some below, because I love making this stuff for you guys, and as always, have a good one.